Good evening there, everybody. Uh, hopefully, y'all um, are having a wonderful day today. So, I thought that I would do my UFC 256 uh, fight review or card review. Uh, there was a lot of good fights on this card. You could debate that this was the best card of the year. Uh, trying to remember some of the other <laughs> very good cards, but this is certainly up there. Anyway, um, so let's review this. So, out of the whole entire fights. Out of the several that I predicted, out of the main five that I predicted, I believe I at least ended up getting three correct. Um, I got one wrong, and one I guess you could consider that I got wrong because it was a majority draw. Um, but anyway, when it comes down to it overall, let's talk about some of the fights and how they went down. So, some of the predictions that I got right, uh, one was Moikano versus Fiziev. I believe is his name, fighter from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I was impressed with Fiziev's striking when I first saw him and I did some research on him. I was impressed with his power uh, and his defense. And Moikano, just a little bit too straightforward, um, doesn't move his head around enough. And I knew eventually Fiziev very well could catch him. So I ended up getting that prediction right, uh, although Moikano did have his moments. Moicano's not a bad fighter, but in my opinion, he's just never going to be in elite class. So it is what it is. Another fight that I ended up getting right was Cub Swanson uh, in his victory. I can't remember for the life of me. Uh, the name escapes me right now. Um, I can't remember the name of his opponent, but he came back in a return and ended up knocking out his opponent, I believe, in the second round. So good for Cub Swanson. Another fight uh, that I ended up getting right, although I think you can say that this fight could have went either way, was Mackenzie Dern and her opponent. I forgot her opponent's name as well. <laughs> Just a lot of names to remember, so I apologize. Um, but I didn't make a video on that fight because that was a last-minute fight that was bumped up immediately, and I said I was only going to do the main five cards. And uh, my prediction was Mackenzie Dern to win. She did win, but in all honesty, um, you could make an argument that Mackenzie Dern could have lost that fight, but it is what it is. Uh, Junior Dos Santos versus Gane. Um, you know, um, I did predict Gane to win the fight. He won by knockout. Thought he looked decently impressive. We'll see what happens with him. Uh, you know, he's going to be a very decent contender in the heavyweight division. He's going to be probably within the top seven, top six, top eight at least. I'd love to see him fight Derek Lewis next. I'd love him to see him fight maybe even a Curtis Blades. He very well could be potentially ready, may, may, you know, ready, excuse me, maybe even an Alistair Overeem. Um, one of those fights. Um, another fight uh, did, that I got right on this card, let me see, was it was there one more? <laughs> or that might actually be it. This this is where I get into the category of uh, more the fights that I got wrong today. Uh, Kevin Holland versus Jacare Souza. I favored Jacare Souza by a little bit. I was very surprised that Kevin Holland actually was able to knock him out the way that he did. Uh, Jacare seemed to have a very tough time with him on the ground, and not only that, but the weird type of punch that he knocked him out with was very shocking to me. I did not expect that to happen. Uh, he knocked him out, actually, or he hurt him while punching off of his back, and that's not usually something you see because you're not going to have an extreme amount of power usually from that angle, but he was able to wind it up enough to the point to where he did, and he was able to knock out Jacare Souza. I believe it was in the first round, so congratulations to Kevin Holland. I will now have to say that he is one of the more elite contenders, and we'll see what happens with him. Do I think he'll become the UFC champion or anything? Probably not. I think his skill set is too limited, but he's got a great reach. He's got great power. He's tricky on the ground. His striking is improving, so... We'll see what happens. You never know. I'd love to see him maybe fight Kelvin Gastelum next or an opponent like that. Uh, Jack Hermanson, you know, Marvin Vittori, one of those guys. That'd be a very interesting fight. Anyway, so that was one of the fights that I got wrong. One, The fight that I got the most wrong, <laughs> and I think this very well might go for everybody. Um, performance of the night very well might go to Charles Oliveira. Um, wow. Wow. What a performance by Charles Oliveira. There's so much to talk about tonight. There's so much that happened tonight. And Charles Oliveira probably had the most dominant performance out of anybody tonight that I've seen. And to do it against Tony El Kukoy Ferguson, 
is quite astonishing. Um, I predicted Tony Ferguson to win this fight. I didn't really predict him to win by stoppage. I had one person comment on my video saying, I got Tony Ferguson by second round stoppage. I didn't predict that Tony was going to stop Charles, but I thought that Charles, even though his striking did look better in the last fight against Kevin Lee, I was like, well, you know what? Kevin Lee sort of was going a little bit on the downslide. Let's see where this fight, you know, goes. And it was not competitive. And Tony Ferguson in that first round is lucky that his elbow didn't snap in half <laughs> because it was very close to that point. Um, when it comes down to the overall bottom line is this, Charles looked amazing. Uh, he manhandled Tony Ferguson. And Tony Ferguson, I thought, and the part of the reason why we all thought the Habib Nurmagomedov versus Tony Ferguson fight was going to be so interesting is because Tony Ferguson has great stamina. He never stops coming at you. And even if Habib got him down to the ground, Tony is great off of his back with submissions. You know, he's very tricky. He's an A-class submission artist. This dude is even a couple levels above Tony Ferguson. Charles Oliveira, we know, if you know UFC, if you've watched UFC for a while, you know how good he is on the ground. But the bottom line is this, when it comes down to it, Charles Oliveira is probably the Damian Maya of that division right now. And that's saying a lot, just with better striking. Because one thing I've seen about Charles Oliveira in his last couple of fights, not only has he improved his ground game, um, his striking has gotten better. And his movement and defense has gotten better, which is not something you usually see out of primarily submission artists. Um, I got to say, I was thoroughly impressed with Charles Oliveira. I thought he looked very good, and he dominated it. He dominated the fight three rounds to zero. Uh, what's next for Tony Ferguson and Charles Oliveira? Well, Tony Ferguson, he'll have to go back to the drawing board. I think he's getting up there in age in his late 30s, so we'll see if he even continues fighting anymore. But maybe a fight against, you know, um, maybe Dan Hooker. Uh, that'd be a decent fight. Uh, Dan Hooker is also coming off of a loss. Uh, maybe a fight against, say, um, I'm trying to think who else is in that division. Uh, I know Max Holloway isn't a, really a part of that division. He kind of moves up and down. But Max Holloway would be an interesting fight. Um, you know, I don't know. Just... To just, just, I'd have to look and see overall who else is in that division in the lower parts. I can't remember for the life of me right now, but, uh, you know, he, he can find a good contender. Tony, as of this moment, probably is going to be out of the top five. We'll see overall what happens, but, uh, you know, very dominant performance by Charles Oliveira. We'll see what happens for Tony Ferguson next, but he's definitely going to have to take a, you know, one of the bottom 10 guys next just to really warm himself up and get back in the groove. Um, for Charles Oliveira, he's going to have to face a top five guy next because as of right now, he is a top five guy. Um, one of the most dominant performance I've seen against a top contender that I did not expect to be that dominant in years. Um, it was just, it, it was crazy. Um, I was actually making a list today where it was 50-50 uh, fights going in and then it was actually dominant performances. Uh, so fights like Steep Miocic versus Daniel Cormier 3, at least in my opinion it was. Steep Miocic versus Francis Ngannou, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of another one that was 50-50. Uh, Dustin Poirier versus Max Holloway 2, because in my opinion, Dustin won that fight four runs to one. Um, you know, and Israel Adesanya versus Robert Whitaker, Israel Adesanya versus Paulo Costa, fights like that. That's what one of these fights were, because even though Tony Ferguson was favored, you could probably argue that this was a 60-40 fight in favor of Tony, but no one expected Charles Oliveira, not, not only did not a lot of people expect him to win, nobody expected him to just go in there and dominate the way he did. And I know a certain amount of people are going to say, oh, well, this is Tony Ferguson coming off of a loss and he's getting old and overall, you know, that doesn't count. He's just, well, you know, people are going to say Tony is not the same fighter. The bottom line is this. When a fighter kind of gets defeated one time, um, some a lot of their flaws are really exposed. It's kind of the same thing with a Tyron Woodley. And Tyron Woodley was a very good champion. But people didn't really realize how one-dimensional Tyron Woodley truly was until Kamaru Usman got a hold of him. And then, you know, <laughs> and then Gilbert Burns got a hold of him and did the same game plan. And then Colby did the same thing to him and with the same game plan. So 
it is what it is. And when you take a look at Tony Ferguson, uh, it's it's interesting because no one expected someone to dominate Tony Ferguson on the ground like this ever. And he just, I mean, he just completely dominated him. It was, <laughs> it was not a contest whatsoever. So congratulations to Charles Oliveira. Next fight, maybe the winner or the loser of Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. Justin Gagey, maybe. Michael Chandler is now in that division as well. So we'll see what happens. Very, very interesting amount of choices that he has there. Um, but anyway, uh, so besides that, let's talk about the main event, Davison Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno. Now, first, now it was a majority draw and you're going to have a certain amount of people arguing, oh, I thought this guy won the fight. I thought this guy won the fight, blah, blah. I don't necessarily have a problem with the draw. Um, personally, who do I think won the fight? I thought Figueredo won the fight. And I know I'm going to have a lot of people on my ass because, and it, it was very clear from this fight commentary that the fight commentary had a lot of stock invested into Brandon Moreno. The UFC obviously has a lot of possibly good upcoming stock invested in Brandon Moreno. And the reason why is because he is a Mexican fighter and the Mexican fan base and the Mexican audience and the Mexican American fan base and audience is one of the biggest audiences and fan bases that you could possibly have when it comes to fighting in general. Uh, just take a look at how big of fans the Mexicans are when it comes to Canelo Alvarez, Juan Manuel Marquez, you know, Julio Cesar Chavez. All, they love their boxing. They love their fighting. And if they can get another crowd that could, you know, make them appeal to a Mexican fighter, they're going to do that. And it was very obvious in this fight that they are very biased in their commentary. Because the shots Davison Figueroa was landing, I almost heard no mentions <laughs> of, of his shots landing from Joe Rogan or Daniel Cormier. But every little piddly shot that was landed by Brandon Moreno, oh my God, did you see that shot? Like <laughs> it was, it was ridiculous. But the bottom line is this: um, this was a close fight. Uh, Davison Figueroa, I thought won the first two rounds. The third round, in my opinion, was a toss up, and of course there was that. Um, you know, uh, low kick, I believe, in a on accident that ended up, you know, made uh, to, to where there was a point deduction, a low blow on accident to where that led to a point deduction, which was strange because, um, Figueroa really had not low blowed him multiple times. Maybe the referee just thought that it was possibly on purpose, so I don't know. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I thought that was a little bit weird. Um, and suspicious, but maybe that's just me because I don't see usually a lot of referees take a point away after just one low blow. Maybe he thought he was doing him dirty because he did eye poke him one time before. And I, I don't know if you want to say that, but to me, it was a little bit fishy. I don't know. I don't know many referees, uh, in many fights that would take away a point just because of one low blow. I thought it was a little bit odd, but it is what it is. Uh, the fourth round I thought went to Brandon and the fifth round, I thought, went to Davison Figueredo. Um, so, it is what it is. I personally thought Figueredo won the fight. Um, you're going to have a lot of... And listen, listen to me clearly when I say this. You're going to have a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people, more people on Brandon Moreno's side than Davison Figueredo's side. And the reason why that is, is because not only was Brandon Figueredo the underdog, and when there's always a close fight, people always love to scream robbery. But Brandon Moreno is a Mexican fighter, and you're going to have a lot of the Mexican fan base on his side. And I already see it. I see a lot of Mexican fans right now overall saying, oh, he got robbed. He had more takedowns and all sorts of stuff. You know, I, I can already see it, you know, but it is what it is. Personally, who would I would, you know, who would I have given this fight to? I would have given it to the Brazilian, Davison Figueiredo, but it is what it is. Now, the question is overall is that is a rematch going to happen? And that is very most likely <laughs> that a rematch is going to happen. And Brandon very well could win that rematch because Davison Figueroa does not cover up very well. His stamina seems to be a little bit of an issue. Uh, on top of that, he relies a little bit too much on his power. If Brandon Moreno is able to play it like TJ Dillashaw was able to against Henan Barrao because Davison Figueroa sometimes looks too much for that one, you know, punch knockout. And I think that's what he was expecting is a one-shot knockout. 
um, he could beat him. He could beat him just off of volume. He could beat him just off of accuracy, which he almost did. But it, in my opinion, it just wasn't enough. I thought Davidson Figueroa should have won the fight. But it is what it is. Uh, when it comes down to it overall, um, you know, Brandon can beat him in the rematch. And Figueroa will have to make adjustments because if he does not make adjustments, I would favor Brandon. Brandon, did I just say Brandon Figueroa? <laughs> my bad. Brandon Moreno. In, in my opinion, uh, Figueredo will have to make adjustments because if he does, if he does not, Brandon Moreno will make adjustments, and in my opinion, he would beat him in a rematch. So I don't know overall who to predict who would win in a rematch, but when it comes down to it, both of them have something to work on. You could tell that Figueredo's power was bothering Brandon, uh, you know, early on, and then he lost a little bit of steam later on. And I said Brandon is very tricky on the ground. He did get him on the ground multiple times. Although Figueredo never really stayed on the ground for too long. But it is what it is. Uh, in my opinion, Figueredo won the fight. But it is what it is. Uh, the very close fight. And I don't really have a problem with the draw. So it is what it is. But that's really about it for today. Very interesting night of fights. I thought it was a very great night. Very great day of fights. Anthony Joshua was on. Great to see him return. And the UFC 256, uh, amazing, amazing card. Amazing card. Uh, but that's really about it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see what happens in the near future. Let me know what you guys thought, and I'll talk to you all later.